Hello everyone and welcome back for some more Drag Race gossip, secrets and drama. So I'm back for another Roscoe's recap and this viewing party was for season 16 episode 8 and the guest this week was Morphine Love Dion. Today we're going to be talking about why Morphine says that Plain Jane is stingy, why Maya Iman LePage's runway this week was so bad, Ninfia Wynn's secret surgery, and Plain Jane calls out a mandatory meeting for reigniting their feud. All that and more coming up in today's video, so let's get started. Also, I'd just like to quickly say that I'm so close to reaching 100,000 subscribers, so if you're not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button as it really does help me out. And I do have something special planned for when I hit 100k subscribers, so please help me get there as soon as possible by subscribing. Thank you! So they started off by talking about the Watcher Packing episode with last week's Eliminated Queen Megami, and Morphine brought up what Maya said at the beginning of this week's episode after Morphine said she was sad that Megami had left, and Maya said that Morphine didn't like Megami. And Morphine said, quote, By the way, what Maya said was a lie. I like Megami. Now. And everyone laughed, and Morphine said she was joking and she really does like Megami. Nasha then brought up Megami's elimination last week and asked what it was like coming back into the workroom after her elimination. And Morphine said that she's a Capricorn and she never normally cries and she doesn't even cry in front of her mum. But for some reason on Drag Race, Morphine cried after every elimination. And Morphine also said she's not sure what it's like on other seasons, but on season 16, all the girls got really close, which is why every elimination was so sad. Batty Davis then said that on the show, Morphine had said that her mum doesn't know that she does drag, and she asked if that has changed. And Morphine said her mum still has no idea that she does drag, but apparently one of Morphine's aunties called her and said that they all watched Drag Race and they had seen Morphine on Drag Race. And Morphine asked if her auntie was going to tell her mum about it, and the auntie said no, they won't tell her, they just thought it was funny and crazy that her mum still didn't know. And Nasha joked and said that she's baffled that someone from her family hasn't gossiped about it yet and her mum hasn't found out. Nasha then asked if Morphine ever intends on telling her mum about doing drag, and Nasha said that when they asked Kim Chi about it on season 8, Kim Chi said no. And Morphine said that when she's quote, rich, famous and stable, she will tell her mum. But Morphine added that she's non-binary and a bit more feminine, so she wants to go out of the house in nails or in drag and makeup, but she can't do that at the moment. And Morphine said she first wants to move out and experience all of that, and then she may potentially tell her parents about drag after that. Nasha then brought up this week's mini challenge, which was the reading challenge, and Nasha asked Morphine if there were any funny reads that weren't shown in the episode. Morphine joked that her reads weren't that funny and said, quote, thank god they put the funny ones. But Morphine also joked that she's, quote, got barely two brain cells, and she's not able to come up with jokes on the spot like that. But Morphine does remember that she had a read about Nymphia Wind and said that her teeth were yellow, which is presumably a reference to the fact that Nymphia's signature colour is also yellow. Morphine also said that Plain Jane had a lot more reads than was shown, but she said, quote, she's nasty, so anything she says is a read. Batty then said that since they're talking about Plain Jane, she said that they had been asking all of the other queens when they come to Roscoe's what their relationship is like with Plain Jane, and she asked if Morphine is friends with Plain Jane. Morphine then said, quote, no, we're not friends anymore, but then she said she was joking and they are friends, and Plain Jane was just in Miami with Morphine and they had a good time. Time. Morphine then added that she and Plain Jane knew each other from before Drag Race, and then said, quote, So, yeah, we're friends. And her voice went up really high when she said it. And Batty Davis joked and said that she doesn't believe Morphine, and the audience started laughing. But Morphine didn't really say any more about it. And just as some bonus tea in case you don't know about Plain Jane, as we all know, the person that Plain Jane had the most feuds with was a mandatory meeting, and the two of them had several feuds on the show until Amanda was eliminated. And the two of them have since had a few more arguments on Twitter since the show came out. For example, one time Amanda tweeted saying she knew that she looked busted on Drag Race, but said that she could fix her makeup, but Plain Jane couldn't fix being a quote, hating ass bee. 
And Plain Jane replied and said that the word fix is subjective and also said Amanda is on her way from drag incompetence to drag mediocrity. And we didn't really hear much more about it, but then Amanda appeared on the show Hey Queen with Johnny McGovern, which is now on WOW Presents Plus. And Johnny asked Amanda about her relationship with Plain Jane. And Amanda said that they had, quote, exchanged some texts and they were able to, quote, clear the air and set some boundaries. And there may be some potential for a friendship in the future. And Amanda said that the first time she and Plain Jane had ever spoken by text outside of the group chat, she felt like Plain's tone was a bit, quote, flippant, and it felt like Plain was giving her the, quote, cattiness that you have on Twitter. And Amanda said she put her foot down and set boundaries and told Plain not to talk to her like that and, quote, save it for Twitter. And she also said to Plain that if she's going to text Amanda on her personal number, she needs to talk to Amanda like a person. And more recently, it looks like there were some developments where Plain Jane and Amanda's feud seems to have come up again. On Twitter recently, Amanda tweeted saying, That's too much. Sister is hilarious to me. And I couldn't quite figure out what this was referring to, but people in the comments were mentioning head and shoulders shampoo and dandruff, so I assume it was potentially about the reading challenge where one of the reads was that Plain Jane had dandruff. And also, just to explain, Amanda had been receiving a lot of hate on Twitter recently and she had blocked a bunch of people, so she decided to change her name on Twitter to Amandatory Blocking. And then Amanda tweeted saying, Now with the name Amandatory Blocking, if you tweet something at me that threatens to disturb my peace in any way, and then I click your profile and you're not following me, but you are following Aircraft Annie, baby, you're getting blocked boots. Now you know. And Aircraft Annie is obviously a reference to Plain Jane. Plain Jane then retweeted Amanda's tweet and said, Sister, co-worker, again with this, you're a smart girl and I see what you're doing. Enough is enough. Please find another brand stat. Leave me alone at this point, lol. And Amanda replied to that saying, Loved your hair on the runway aircraft. Keep slaying us boots. And Plain responded saying, Well, thank you, Miss Conference. That I appreciate. Amanda then tweeted again after that and was seemingly addressing some of the negative tweets that she had been receiving from fans. And Amanda said, Also, baby, if you're tired of me continuing to have feelings as I watch episodes of The Girl Who Made My Life Hell on that set last summer when all I wanted was for her to leave me alone, laughing my ass off. And some people in the comments posted a photo of Amanda's padding from the girl group challenge where the judges said that it looked bad whereas Plain's padding looked good. And Amanda said she did contact the person who does Plain Jane's padding and asked them to make some for her but they apparently said no. So it looks like Amanda and Plain Jane still are not on the best of terms and we'll have to wait and see if any more developments come out about this. Anyway, back to Roscoe's and Naysha then said that the challenge for this week is Snatch Game and asked if that was something Morphine was looking forward to. Morphine said she was 100% dreading this challenge and every year when she submitted an audition tape, that was the one thing she hated doing because she found it so hard. And Morphine joked that she was hoping that RuPaul would forget to do it this season. Batty then said that RuPaul was very honest with the queens during this week's walkthrough and was kind of reading the queens, and Batty asked Morphine what was going on. Morphine said she's not sure what's going on, but RuPaul this season is more, quote, fun and loose, and she's talking to the queens so much. Morphine then said, quote, the coffee enema is hitting for sure. And this is a reference to on season 14 during the ball challenge, when RuPaul was acting a bit strange and quite hyperactive during the critiques and said that her coffee enema was hitting. But back to the episode, and Morphine said that when Ru was talking to Maya and was kind of telling her that she needed to show more personality, Morphine thinks that Ru is rooting for Maya and just wants her to do well. And Morphine said she didn't know Maya that well before they were on the show, but when she hung out with her on the show, she realised that Maya is, quote, crazy, kooky and funny. And Ru clearly senses that in Maya and wants to bring it out. And she was effectively giving her tough love like a mother. Naysha then asked if Morphine has disagreed with any of the eliminations on the season so far. And Morphine said no, but then she said, quote, oh, Mirage. And she laughed and then said, quote, but she didn't know her lyrics. Naysha then asked how obvious it was that Mirage didn't know her lyrics. And Morphine said that even from the back of the stage, you could tell that Mirage was not lip syncing the lyrics. 
And when Mirage did the iconic spin during the lip sync, the queens at the back of the stage could see that Mirage did not know the words at all. But Morphine said if she had known the words, she would still be in the competition. Nature then said that they had already asked her about her relationship with Plain Jane, but what was Morphine's relationship with the rest of the cast? And she said that Morphine had previously said that they're all pretty close. And Morphine said, quote, yeah, at least with me. And everyone laughed. Morphine then said that she is, quote, the oracle of the season because she gets on with everyone. And she said that the cast will come to her for advice. And she gave some examples and said, quote, if someone is fighting with Plain or if someone is fighting with Plain. And everyone laughed laughed again. Nature then asked who Morphine got the closest to on set and Morphine said that Tsunami and Q are her best friends and they talk every single day. Morphine also said she knew Tsunami from before the season and they both knew that each other were going to be on Drag Race season 16. Nature then asked how many times Morphine had auditioned for Drag Race and Morphine said six times and she also added that Safira Cristal had auditioned 11 times. They then got to the actual Snatch Game and Morphine said that it's so weird and scary because it's so quiet when you're actually filming it. And Morphine said that her good friend Tsunami just quote wasn't good, but Morphine also said she knows that she herself was also not good in Snatch Game. And Nasha said quote, but you know what, you had some laughs where Tsunami was just kind of challenging. And Morphine said that Rue will try and help you out by throwing you a ball, or in other words, an opportunity to come back with a joke. And Morphine said quote, I'm not good at baseball, so I clearly missed every shot. And Tsunami wasn't even at the baseball event. At least I was at the event. I just did really bad. And everyone laughed. They also talked about Ninfia Wind in the Snatch Game and said how she bombed. And Morphine said, quote, she was also not at the baseball event either. And Morphine said she didn't know that Ninfia had those monkey puppets with her. And also, when Ninfia did the monkey sounds, it apparently went on for way longer than they showed on TV. And Morphine said all the queens were just sitting around looking at each other, waiting for Ninfia to finish the monkey sounds. And apparently, quote, no one told her to stop, so she just kept going. They then talked about the moment later in the episode in the workroom when Morphine was trying to sweet talk Plain Jane into giving her the immunity potion. And Plain said that she was thinking about it because Morphine is her sister, but she also said she didn't think Morphine would need it this week. But then in the confessional, Plain Jane said that the only reason she said that to Morphine was to get her off her back. And after watching that moment for the first time, Morphine said, quote, Now I'm peed and embarrassed. I should never have went up to that B. F that B. Morphine then said that her and Plain are from the same drag family, and she said that Plain is, quote, stingy, but Morphine said this is just Sister T and their friends, but Plain Jane is actually stingy. And Morphine started telling a story and said, quote, she's going to be so annoyed. But Morphine continued and said that once she went away to New York with Plain Jane and Q and they got an Airbnb to share. And Morphine was the one who found and booked the Airbnb, but Plain arrived first and took the master bedroom. And then when Morphine arrived, she thought that Plain was joking about taking the master bedroom because Morphine was the one that actually found the Airbnb in the first place. And Morphine then asked Plain to move rooms, but Plain said no and stayed in the room and she was actually serious and didn't switch rooms. And so Morphine said that Plain is quote stingy and that it was also quote very on brand for her to keep the potion for herself. They then went on to the runway for this week and the category was Dancing Queens and they went through each person's look and asked Morphine to give it tens if she liked it or a chop if she doesn't. And when they got to Maya Iman LePage, the audience shouted out chop. And Nasha said it looked a bit like Maya had pulled something out of her suitcase and tried to make it look hip hop. And she also asked Morphine if she knew anything about it. Morphine then hesitated and said, quote, I think I'm allowed to say it. And Nasha joked and said, quote, of course you are. And Morphine explained that Maya's designer in Miami didn't send her seven of her costumes for Drag Race. And literally on the day they were all flying to California to film the show, Maya was apparently on her bed in her room just waiting for the designer to call but they never did so Maya then had to fly out to drag race with seven of her costumes missing and this runway category was one of the outfits that was missing and so presumably Maya had to come up with something at the last minute and Morphine said because of that she feels indifferent about this outfit because she feels bad for Maya 
Batty then said that for any queens wanting to go on Drag Race, don't just use one designer because this is what can happen. And Nasha said it's difficult because everyone uses the same designers and often a designer is already making costumes for another queen so they can't take on any more clients. Nasha also said the best thing to do is to find a new designer who is willing to work with you and give you the opportunity because it gives them a chance to make a name for themselves and they're usually more loyal because they're still starting out in the industry. Morphine then said something similar happened to her and the outfit that she wore for this runway, which was flamenco, was actually her second option. And Morphine explained that there had been a lot of comments questioning why Morphine was wearing a Spanish outfit when she is Latina from Nicaragua. And Morphine's original runway was going to be a traditional Nicaraguan outfit with a basket of fruits, but the basket broke the day of and the dress wasn't working so she had to go back and do this flamenco look instead. They then got on to the judges' critiques for this week and Morphine said she knew that she was going to be in the bottom and it was deserved. And Batty Davis asked Morphine if she thinks the runway matters and Morphine said, quote, yes, 100%. And Morphine went on to explain that in her opinion, the runway matters if multiple people did badly in the main challenge, and then the judges probably use the runway as the deciding factor as to who is going to be in the bottom two and who is going to be safe. They then got to the moment in the episode when Morphine and Tsunami were in the bottom two and had to lip sync, and Morphine won the lip sync and Tsunami was eliminated, and everyone got up and cheered for Morphine. And Nasha then joked and said, quote, I just want to also point out that we had a guest who was not eliminated. YouTube, you effers. And everyone laughed. Morphine talked more about the lip sync against Tsunami and said that it was very emotional because she's such good friends with Tsunami. And they were all convinced that the bottom two would either be Tsunami and Nymphia or Morphine and Nymphia because, quote, Nymphia did the worst. So when they found out it was actually Tsunami versus Morphine, it was really emotional. And Morphine said she suffers with anxiety and she was just so anxious that she kind of blanked out and went into flight or fight mode. And when she kissed Tsunami, it felt like she was giving her, quote, the kiss of death. And she also said that it was way more emotional in real life and they were crying so much on stage, but they cut a lot of that out in the episode. They then moved on and Nasha told a funny story and said that last week at Roscoe's, when they were discussing Roscoe's having the YouTube premium subscription, which costs $2 per month, Nasha had jokingly said, quote, just join, I'll even give you $10. And apparently after she said that, someone actually sent a request to Nasha's Venmo requesting $10. And the other people on stage couldn't believe it, but Nasha said it was true. Nasha then found the person's name in her Venmo and read it out and accepted their request for $10 and said, quote, Cody, you little bleep, there you go, mother effer. And Nasha actually paid the $10. And Nasha said that if she doesn't find Cody subscribed to Roscoe's YouTube Premium, she's going to come and find him because Nasha just paid for five months for free for him. And everyone in the audience laughed and cheered. And Nasha also said that no one else should get any funny ideas because she won't be doing it again. They then moved on to the Q&A and someone asked who the best makeup artist was on the season besides Morphine. And Morphine said Nymphia and said, quote, Nymphia paints good, she just got her nose done too. And it sounds like she was implying that Nymphia had some sort of cosmetic surgery on her nose. And everyone gasped and laughed a bit when she said that. And Morphine laughed and said that that was a secret and she wasn't supposed to say that and said, quote, she's going to kill me. And finally, an audience member asked who Morphine would, quote, slap the bleep out of from her cast. And everyone laughed at the question. And Batty then said, quote, except plain Jane. And Morphine said if she were on the show Bad Girls Club and they were allowed to hit each other, she thinks that if she was a mandatory meeting, she would have been the first girl to punch someone on Drag Race and said that it would have been Plain Jane. And this is presumably because Plain Jane and Amanda have had several feuds on the show. Batty then said that she really thought that it was going to get physical between Amanda and Plain Jane at some point. And Nasha asked if they had ever heard that there was actually a big fight on Drag Race where it got so physical that they couldn't show all of it. And the fight was between Shangela and Mimi Unfirst on season three with the infamous Sugar Daddy fight in Untucked. 
And I have talked about this on my channel before, but according to several queens, such as Alexis Mateo, Stacey Lane Matthews, and Mariah Paris Balenciaga, who were also there, the fight between Shanjda and Mimi did get more physical than what they showed, and a lot of it got cut out. And apparently, Shangela scratched Mimi's face so badly that she was bleeding, and Mimi had to change her wig before she went back to the main stage to cover up the bleeding on her forehead. And so, there you go, there was the Roscoe's recap for Season 16, Episode 8. Let me know what you thought of Snatch Game on Season 16. And let me know who you think is going to win Season 16. And I'd also like to say a massive thank you to all of my other Patreon members. In the Shantae You Stay tier, we have Amy, Anna, Becky, Charlie, David, Emmy, Kat, Lauren, Linda, Shelby, and Craig. And in the You're a Winner Baby tier, we have Christian, Emerald1508, Ethan, PC Smush, Rachel, Rochelle, and Sam. You are all so incredible, and your generous support really does keep my channel going, so thank you all so, so much. And if you'd like to have your comment featured in my Have Your Say videos, as well as get early access to my videos and priority when submitting interview questions, please consider signing up to my Patreon and supporting my channel, and I'll put a link in the description. Please make sure you like, comment, and share this video as it really helps support my channel. And of course, please make sure you hit the subscribe button to stay up to date about new uploads. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you'll join me again in future videos. Thank you, bye!